Hey everybody, this is Scott from Pray 5. Uh, this is our Wednesday night study. We fin- finally got off at chapter 24 on Matthew. Um, we're in, we're going to be in chapter 25 today. We should be having any trouble going through that. Obviously, we've got 25 through 28. So once we finish with that, then we'll, we'll head on to the next one. Still not still not sure exactly which one I'm going to go to yet. Uh, there's several options. I keep changing my mind. Uh, get at, one of the things that influences what I do is uh, the questions that come in, because I don't always get questions on prophecy, obviously, and I don't always... A lot of times we'll get, I'll get questions on everything from what does the Bible say about this, that, or the other. And that's people who are, who are actually reading it or are actually curious. and they, they may be going through it and don't understand something. And I highly suggest if you don't ask me, ask one of your elders. If, if you're a part of a church, uh, elders or your deacon, uh, elders or your pastor. Um, or get, get into a good Bible study. Uh, there's also other options, like if you're not in uh, part of a uh, local assembly, either because it's just you can't get there for the work or whatever, or you're having a hard time finding a good assembly, which that seems to be the case nowadays. Uh, you, can, you can go online. Be careful, uh, the ones that are online. Like we see all these charlatans that are giving a false a, a false gospel, a false religion, such as the the NAR, the New Apostolic Revelation, or the Word of Faith movement. They're all, no. Um, but like people like, you know, my favorite is Jack Hibbs. Uh, I've said that many times on this podcast that uh, Jack Hibbs with real life ministry. If you're wanting to keep up with the um, active news that's going on, not the, not the, not the news that you get maybe some stuff going on uh, with our news here in the States where it's just, they hand pick it uh, to lean to the left. Uh, if you're saying, well, no, that doesn't happen. Well, we don't see all the the wars and the uh, disasters that are going on that we see on the on the social media. You can you can find it, uh, and then they don't report a lot of it. Why? Because it, because it doesn't fit a narrative. And you're saying, well, that's just political, or that's just you know, no. I mean, it's I'm I'm watching on. There's one that I watch. Is his name is Amir A M I R Surfati T S A T S A R F A T I on. Uh, on uh, oh crud, I just went blank. Amir Shafati on um, on one of the, the uh, threads that I, uh, one of the platforms that I watch. I cannot believe I just went blank. It's like saying YouTube. <laughs> he is on YouTube, but he, he has um, uh, he has several different ones. When it comes to me, I'll I'll say it. But on his broadcast, we we see people that are seeing stuff in. Uh, live through cell phones and stuff like that that are filming because everybody has a cell phone nowadays. So, and they're having a hard time. The, the news can't can't block that. Um, so because they don't have they don't have an option to do that. But they don't. When I'll see, we'll see stuff on on his channel that we don't see on the news or won't see it for you know anywhere from thirty minutes to two or three hours or a day or so. And then they bring it up like it's like it's fresh. Uh, and we've already been, we've. Already, Everybody that's watching his podcast or already seen it. Uh, there's a lot of deception. Last week you saw where I had, um, you know, let me turn this a little bit. There we go. Where we had the book from Jack Hibbs. Uh, it's called The Days, D-A-Z-E of Deception, Days of Deception. I saw it on Amazon. I think it's like eight bucks. It's really not. And the book you see here, this is the Gospel According to Rome. Uh, what that is, is I, the... It gives the gospel. It gives the because uh, I, I have people ask me about the difference between uh, Protestant and Catholic as far as what the gospels are. That gives that, that book there is a good guide on showing you which one believes and the other one doesn't, or vice versa. Uh, Telegram, uh, Amir Shafati on Telegram. That's what it is. Uh, but this one is a a, a good reference uh, guide. It's not hard to read, but it gives you chapter and verse on both sides. And it shows you there is a difference in the Gospels. When it, it depends on whether you're uh, Protestant or Catholic um, or even Messianic Jew, there's there's a difference. And you have to say, well, which one do I believe? Well, read your Bible and see for yourself, because that way you can you can investigate, do a little bit of a little bit of legwork, and it'll you'll be able to see for yourself. Um, what we're seeing going on, uh, we you know of course 
I'm not going to go into the details on the what's going on at the Olympics. I mean, my goodness, they it's everywhere. And but <clears throat> the people I've had people that are very uh, caring on both sides. To be honest with you, uh, I, I stayed out of it on purpose because there's enough mudslinging. Uh, is what they did wrong? Yes. Okay, but and I say but, but follow me along here. You got one side that's saying, well, they didn't mean to do the Last Supper, you know, the, the Last Supper, the Passover Supper with Jesus, which is one of the most holy uh, pictures we have, most or events we have in our in Christism. Christism. And uh, they said, oh, we didn't do that. We're doing it to the pagan gods, you know, the Greek pagan gods. Okay. That would have been all fine and dandy. I wouldn't have watched it but because it was nasty. But the um, if that were the case, there's a problem. The IOC, the internet, the the committee on, on Olympic International Olympic Committee, apologized for it, hmm. and they saw it first, and they still said no, it's okay. Well, then the lady that's in the middle, uh, the only female on the stage, uh, she's an atheist, uh, uh, liberal, uh, gay, uh, Orthodox Jew, so therefore she didn't believe in Jesus. She said, "Yeah." I'm, I was the I was the Jewish Jesus, uh, and yeah, that was and she did that on her TikTok and they caught that. Well, then all of a sudden you're starting to see the point I wanted to make was yeah that's we are told that in these end times things would get worse and worse and worse. I'm gonna read two passages real quick before we go into Matthew chapter 25. Um, so the and this is uh, week 29. Excuse me, week 29. I, I may have said 25. Excuse me. But the thing is, <clears throat> the mocking of God won't, he won't tolerate that because that's exactly what they did. And they even did a, if you're watching some of you, I've only seen the snippets and look at the comments and the, on both sides. Um, like, for instance, the, the, the pale horse that was coming through the water, that robot they had coming through the, the, the waterway that they had set up. Well, the pale the rider on the pale horse is a black rider. The, in other words, you have black, black, white, red, or the pale horse, pale horse with the black rider. That's famine, death, uh, disease. Uh, and you have the red, and you have the red, white, black, and and uh, green. When they when it says the pale horse, it's actually the they didn't have a term for it. That's actually going to be uh, uh, it's going to actually be green. So black, white, red, and green, same color as the. Uh, as the flag that's flown in the, in the Middle East. Um, that's part of prophecy. That prophet, prophetically, that's what the in Revelation said, that's one of the four horsemen. Now, is that the actual four horsemen? Of course not. Is that saying, oh, now they're here, where you're, you need to get your tinfoil hat. Well, if that's it, you're thinking, no, 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 nothing, this is all, you're, I've run across people that are close to me, some of them, every time we bring something up, they're saying, oh, no, you just see another thing, you just need to see another demon around the, every corner. Well, but when it lines up with Scripture all together at the same time, all the things are happening all at once, concurrently. And can, I mean, just come on. <laughs> even, the, even the atheists are seeing something's wrong. So what they're doing is they're scrubbing these these, these uh, people who are putting it on, are trying to get taken down, and then somebody else will come up with it and they'll take it down. There's so much of it out there. I don't know if they can get it all, but they're getting, they're getting a lot of it. Um some of the things we're seeing politically as far as in the in our here in the United States, and I say that because I have friends who are listening in Canada. Um, the like for instance, going into Google, I was watching uh, on one of the one of the podcasts that I watch, which I don't agree with their view, like it's called redacted. Um, I like their their journalism, but they're very, very cold when it comes to the Jewish people in Israel. Uh, they're very they're not they're not pro Israel. So that that's a problem because yeah. So the thing is, they're showing when they try to type in on Google attempted assassination of, and as soon as they start typing in, you know how it self populates. They're going to start typing in T R U. Go to Truman. And I tried it, and it's like wow, that's weird. And they they could not pull up the attempted assassination on Trump. It may, as of right now, I haven't looked at it to, to try to find it today, but as of yesterday, I couldn't pull it up. Just try to Google it um, for yourself. Uh, now, I'll, I'll try it here later after you're off the broadcast, but 
how come all of a sudden that can't be found? Uh, and also on the political opponent of his, uh, Kamala, is if you go in and type in, you see, I, I, there, she was in 2020, she was ca- called and labeled as the border czar by the, by the liberal news. There was newscast after newscast saying she's in charge of it. And it wasn't a derogatory term. It was just a term of, you know, okay, now she's in charge of it. She's the supervisor of this called the drug, the, you know, you have drug czars and you have uh, education czars. Well, she was the, called the border czar since uh, 2020. Well, now they say that's, that's bad. So they're scrubbing that off. So, oh, that was never said. So when you, when you start, when they bring this up and say, well, you were the border czar. Oh, I was never the border czar. Try to find it on the internet. And you go to trying to find it. It's not there. You know, they keep putting it up and gets keep taken down. And also how many people of color that she put in prison for drugs. They took that down too, because it looks bad for her. And like I say, whether you vote left or right, I mean, it's, you know, it's vote according to your conscience. If you're voting according to scripture, you have to vote someone who's pro-life, uh, pro-marriage, uh, pro-family, uh, according to biblical standards. Um, they're pulling stuff down where you can't find it. And I mean, I just came across where there are certain districts and certain businesses and cities are now trying to go to a completely cashless uh, venues and stuff. Like when you go to certain venues now, you can only pay, there's no cash. It's only cards. Cashless society. That was in the, that's in scripture. And it's happening in little pockets all over the place. It's convenient. Uh, I like it. I mean, I mean, it, I know what's happening is, you know, it's because so they can have control because if, if you're in a cashless society, the, the antichrist, uh, or in a system through the AI and all the computers and everything else can through the click of a of a mouse or a mouse key click uh, can take away everything you own if you if it's all virtual and you say oh no that that would never happen well that <laughs> you know, keep being naive until until you're until they, they you don't do what they tell you to do uh, that's going to happen that's actually happening currently uh, you can go to China that's currently a, a test in progress it's doing very well for them. Um, the, they're trying to also, we see that we're trying to change SCOTUS, uh, the Supreme court of the United States, where they're wanting, trying to get out the, the conservatives and trying to get liberal, uh, judges in there. So they vote according to non-biblical standards. Our country was founded on Christianity, on the Judeo Christian, uh, faith. You could be any faith you wanted to or nothing, but the government itself was going to be run that way. And it was for many, many, many years. Uh, decades um, and then at, you know now it's no longer uh, so they're trying to get rid of that the um, the war in Israel okay yes we woke up yesterday uh, and they were uh, Israel was attacking uh, Lebanon Hezbollah well like on on that one channel I was telling you about it, they said well that you know the Israelis are are making or attacking people. It's their fault and everything. Well, that one problem with that is, is that there was a ceasefire in place when they were attacked and those 1200 people were slaughtered and, and all the horrific things that happened of babies being thrown in ovens and everything. Now they're trying to deny saying that never happened, even though there's GoPro from the terrorist that they put on the internet on those days on October, on October 7th. Um, so you can't really deny that when there's evidence, and they showed it to the to the national international press in Israel many 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 times. They invited many people to come see it. Um, this is the sign of the times. So let's go ahead and get into uh, the study tonight. We're gonna and let me pray in, and then we're gonna get into just what I was speaking about. You can see that it's like wait a minute, all this stuff that, they, that the Bible's been talking about for two thousand years, or actually longer than that, it's been talking about it. You know, we're going to, we went through Daniel, which was six hundred years, five hundred fifty years before Christ, all the way up until Revelation and the thousand year reign. Uh, it's all, all in Scripture. It's all written down long before anybody. They can't say, well, you didn't. They didn't say that. Well, it's written down in Scripture on millions and millions of Bibles around the earth. It's kind of hard to deny it, and it's happening exactly the way it says it would. Hey, let's go ahead and pray in, shall we? Father, thank you for this time together, your blessings, your mercy, and your grace. We ask that you please give us your truth and the words to say through your Holy Spirit and the words to hear through your Holy Spirit. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, really quickly, I'd like to read on, go all the way to 2 John first. 
2 John chapter 1, where there's only one chapter. Uh, I'm going to start off in verse 6. It says, This is love, that we walk according to His commandments. That's God's commandments. This is the commandment that as you heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers have, have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as, as coming in the flesh. One of the, one of the ways to find out if a spirit is, from, is evil or not, or is from Christ or not, is, to, is for them to admit that Jesus Christ, who is God, came in the flesh. Uh, also, you can say that Jesus is Lord. Not a Lord, but the Lord. Okay. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. One, now, this one's not talking about the in, specific individual. This is talking about the spirit of antichrist. Okay, spirit of antichrist has been around since day one. Um, but the, the ex exact a, a specific individual is coming. It's, it's uh, going to step up. It's going to be an actual man. The false prophet will be an actual man, not a system, but an actual person. The spirit of Antichrist is anyone who's against, who, who speaks against Christ or tries to take, take him away, except we're seeing on, on television right now, like all this stuff that's, that's mocking God through the, what these, these uh, individuals did, these drag queens did. Yeah, something like that. That's also part of it. Um, and there is a price to pay for that. And I, I feel sorry for them, to be honest with you, I really do. I wish they would find Christ so they could find happiness through through him. But hmm. verse eight, it says, Look to yourself, look to yourselves that we do not lose those things which we work for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God, nor it's you're not saved. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and, and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive them into your house, nor greet them. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Does it mean it's like if you just invite somebody in for a glass of tea or something? That's that's not the concept. The concept is, is like, for instance, I'll give you like our friends who are coming to the door on bicycles, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, and, and different religions, and they want to come into your home. They, they worship a different Jesus. A, a, they don't worship God. They call him Jesus Christ, and they wor and they say, we do everything in the name of Jesus Christ. But like, for instance, my Mormon friends, who are the best people I've ever known, they're better than a lot of Christian friends I have, is they believe that Jesus and Lucifer are spirit brothers. If you don't believe me, just ask one. They have to admit that. Okay. Uh, also, the, my Jehovah Witness friends believe that Jesus is actually Michael the archangel who came down and an angel, a created being, and that Jesus is a God, lowercase g. Uh, you can go to uh, LDS.com and look at their, at, at, and go to the Bible there, their, their version of the Bible, or Jehovah Witness, uh, and look at their version of the, uh, the, the New World Translation, and read it for yourself. I don't suggest it if you're going to it to try to find out if it's truth, because it has just enough truth, uh, truth to make it where it sounds right, but then they Put that drop of strychnine in there, and that's they worship. Uh, they they push you to a different Jesus. So therefore, they don't have Jesus. They don't have they don't have God the Son. They have a Jesus, which is not the Jesus. They don't have salvation. No matter how sincere you are, no matter how dedicated you are, you don't have salvation unless you have Christ, God the Son. You know, it's His own words. So if you also, if you look over, now this one you've heard many times come from here and other people, I'm not the only one who says this, but on 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, I had a young man read this who I was speaking with and we were uh, talking over certain things in scripture and he, he just decided to need to ask questions. So I answered the best I could and I said, well, read 2 Timothy chapter 1 or chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, pull the book off the shelf and uh, we, we were in a, in, a, in a room with other people as far as on like like a Zoom connection or whatever that people can come in. And he, was, he started reading it, and he said, this is like watching the news. And it's like, let me read it so you'll understand here. Just think about what we're seeing on the television right now and, what we're, and what's being, uh, what was being scrubbed off our and, and blocked and all that on, on, our, on our local, on our media, on our, on our liberal media. Verse, chapter 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, 
boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-esteem, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. That last part. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. This is just one of many places it says they act, they talk Christianese, or they talk like the Joel Osteens, the Kenneth Copelands, and uh, you know the Beth Moores, people like that, Stephen Furtick's. Um, they, ha- they, they talk, and it sounds really good, it sounds religious. This is them. It says have nothing to do with them. Talking with them is like talking to someone who worships a different God. And a lot of these people, are, you know, they, they, they justify the sin that's in their church. Like Andy Stanley is, is one of the biggest churches in the United States. Uh, you know, he says, you know, certain sins are okay because they're nice people. I'm sure they are nice people. I'm sure they're moral and, and, and nice people and would do anything for you. But if they're in active sin, <clears throat> like I was talking about last week, uh, where somebody had asked me the question, well, what about going to a, a a wedding where it's two of the same gender? Would I do that? Even if, I, if somebody who I cared about, and I, I said, well, let me ask you a question. If that same individual was a married man, uh, let's say it's your dad, and he says, I love your mom, and he said, hey, I want you to come to my service so I can rep- represent and to, to, glor- and to show off my new, my, my, uh, my mistress, to have a ceremony for my mistress. I want to stay married to your mom, but I want you to celebrate and and say that, okay, it may not be your thing, but you're going to, you're going to be there to support them for the mistress. And I said, would you do that? Would you go to that? He said, of course not. What's the difference? Sin is sin. And no matter how you dress it up, it's still sin. And it's still, if it's unforgiven, no, no unforgiven sin will make it into heaven. You say, well, I believe in Jesus Christ. But I'm going to keep whatever my brand of sin is, and I'm going to continue to practice it. Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11, God's very clear. He says, do not be deceived, for the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. You can be sitting in a pew, praising the name of Jesus, practicing, you know, if you're practicing living with your girlfriend or boyfriend, uh, uh, straight, gay, whatever, and you say, well, I'm doing good on everything else, but I'm not giving this up. And this is not sin. But how can you be forgiven of sin if you don't admit it, if you don't confess it? You say, but I like it. And this is, way, uh, this is what I, I was, I'm inclined to. Well, again, the same, the same concept applies. If I'm, if I'm inclined to go out and rob banks, I mean, you know, <laughs> a theft, then, it, you know, God says no. You can't. You we don't get to pick and choose what we want to do. We have to pick. We have to either accept his way or no way, or the other way. There is no in between. So God says you're either a friend of me and in a enemy to the world, or vice versa. Okay, verse twenty five. Let's go ahead and go into that. Um, this is the parable about the wise and the foolish virgins. I get asked about this every once in a while. It's like I don't quite understand the concept here. Okay. So think fake Christians and plug it in here, okay? People who go to church, which there's, according to the, what was it, 15 or 18 years ago, something like that, they did a, a Barnum study on, I forget how many churches. It wasn't a real huge, it's like seven, less than 2,000, something around there. I mean, so it wasn't real big. And they were showing that approximately no more, no, no more than 20% overall, some more than others, obviously, no more than overall of 20% of all those churches combined did the pastors and the elders that they spoke to to take, take the survey believe that that they believe that no more than 20% of their church was actually saved. These are people that the people that the congregation goes up and speak with in private, in confidentiality. And they're saying overall, and again, this is overall, you may have 90% at one church and 10% at another, but overall. So that means there's a lot of people in church who are going to go, but Lord, I cast out demons in your name. I did things in your name. And he's going to say, I, I never knew you, you workers of unrighteousness, of lawlessness. 
And he said, you must go out into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's, that's hell. There'll be a lot of people in church. If the rapture happens, hopefully if you're an unbeliever, the rapture happens on, on a day that you're in church and you're sitting there looking around and it gets your attention. That's what I hope. That's my prayer for you. Okay, so verse 25, on the, it says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be likened unto the ten, to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their, with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. At midnight, there was a cry that was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. And then all these virgins arose and trimmed their, their lamps. In other words, you're getting ready to start to fire it up. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. In other words, we didn't prepare. We know you prepared. So give us some of yours because you know that's good enough. We'll just we'll just all share. Even though we didn't do we didn't do anything, we didn't weren't using our the wisdom that we were given that God told us about. But we want you to take care of us. It'd be like me going out and working and then supporting you if because you sit at the house wanting to watch TV. Then no, that's called that's evil. Um, and we our our country is doing it. Hmm, won't go there. Uh, trim their lamps and the foolish person said to the wise give us some of your oil so that our for our lamps are going out but the wise answered saying no lest there be there should not be enough for, for us and you but go he said but go rather rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves in other words hey do you know try to get there they're trying to these they're not being heartless they're saying all I've got is enough for myself that I I got and but there's, go grab you some, and hopefully you can make it. You know, trying to give them some wisdom. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, uh, open to us. And he answered them, and he said, Assuredly, I'm saying to you, I don't know you. These are people that, these are the virgins that had their, their, they were all 10 exposed to what they should do. All 10 had the opportunity. Only five of them actually followed through to read the Bible and just take in the knowledge and do nothing with it and say, well, okay, I read it like a book. I'm, I'm going to heaven. Uh, -uh. <laughs> but to read the Bible and to actually absorb it, take it in and to apply it is the same concept. And this is, also in reference to the coming rapture, because there's going to be people who say, oh, but I was in church. I, 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 I did these things. They never prepared. They never took it seriously. They thought, well, I, I'm, a, I'm a good person. I, I've, I've gone to church. I, I'm, I'm good to go. And God's going to say, no, no, you're not. He said, well, does it say that anywhere else? Yeah, actually, it does. In Matthew 7, 721, Matthew 721. You don't have to go over there, but I'm going to go over there real quick. Um, 721. Yeah, we'll start off in 721. Go to 723. Matthew 721 into 723. This is what I told you about earlier, what Christ said. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, that's Jesus. Excuse me. Long day. <laughs> Lord, Lord, will shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does who does the will of my Father in him. But he who does. Let me start over again. Not everyone who says to me, "Lord, Lord," shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. In other words, the ones who will enter, the ones that follow, read the book, and apply it and follow it and do what it says. Many many will say to me on that day, "What day is that? That's day of judgment." Lord, Lord, we, we, have we not prophesied in your name? Whose name? The name of Jesus. Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Practice. Just like it says in 
Romans chapter 1 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. It says, those who practice lawlessness, we all struggle. I was, uh, myself and, and Larry, uh, Bible talk with Larry and Scott. Uh, matter of fact, we had a conversation with a, a young lady, a woman online this last week and saying that she struggles and that's, you know, what do I do? And, and I, I, I'm following God. She struggles with same sex attraction, but she sees that God says that's wrong. Just like theft is wrong. Lying is wrong. Uh, 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 adultery, uh, you know, coveting, murder, all the things of the Ten Commandments are all wrong. It's all sin. If we struggle with it, that's good because that means we have the Holy Spirit in us saying, no, that's wrong. And you follow that. But if you don't str- if you're doing these sin, some, what the Bible calls sin, one, you say, well, I don't do, I don't go out and commit murder. I don't, I don't hurt anybody. I go to my job, but I want, I, I like going out and, you know, committing adultery on my wife, but I'm, I'm a really good husband. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. You say, well, I'll take care of my wife and kids. I love them. I just need a little extra on the side, you know, because, and it makes it, you know, and we just, we justify it. Okay. If that was the case, the, the thing is, God says, that's, if you practice these things, that's who he's talking about. This could be somebody going to the church. We've, we've come across people more and more, unfortunately, in, in, that are in, in the church who are saying, well, I'm, you know, they go to church and everything, and then we find out that they were cheating on their wife or, or on their, you know, wife on their husband or whatever, or were stealing from the church or whatever. And the, the thing is, they were practicing it. Well, he said, not only are those that are practicing lawlessness, like God, like God just said here, he said, but those who also approve of it or they're doing it themselves. So if you're, you're there's no such thing as standing on the sidelines and going, well, I, I don't agree with this, but I approve of it. it. You know, to each his own, you know, it's okay. It's fine. Who, no, we, I can't judge them. Don't judge lest you be judged. And again, before you read that verse, before you, you throw that out there, at least know where it's at in the Bible and actually read it for yourself because that's not what it says. The context is totally different. But people will, will take what they heard on TikTok or on YouTube and, and pull up and say, oh, this is what the Bible says. Have you read it yourself? Well, no, but that's what it says. Or they'll say, well, somebody else tells something that's in the Bible. And they say, oh, well, this is in the Bible. And you say, no, 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 it's not in the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible does it say that you can do that. Well, you just need to read it and find it. <laughs> I've actually been told that several times. They said, it's in there. You just need to go find it. Well, have you read the Bible? Well, no. Well, then how do you know it's in there? It just is. I just know. Trust me. I just know. No, I've read the Bible. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's not in there. You want me to go find your evidence to prove your point against Scripture. It doesn't happen. Okay. So just like in what it says here, like it said in Matthew 7, it says, you workers, you practicers of lawlessness. Why do I keep harping on this? Because our world is drowning in perversion, drowning in sin, in the cancer of the soul. We go, you, you know, you can't go to uh, California, certain towns, and go in and they can steal up to a thousand dollars of stuff and just walk out of the store, and no one can, no one will do anything about it. That's lawlessness, and those who are doing it are that's if you're a th- if you're one of those thieves. And you're practicing that. That's the same thing as practicing this, the a perversion. It's sin. As a Christian, we still have the tendencies to do our flavor of sin. But we struggle with it because we know it's sin. And we know God hates sin. He says specifically, H-A-T-E-S. He says, I hate sin. And we are to hate what he hates. He doesn't say hate the people. He says hate the sin. doesn't mean hate the sin, love the sinner. Well, some people take it too far and say, well, that means we got to go march with them or we got to go and hug, and hug them and say, okay, it's going to be fine. What you're doing is okay. We don't agree with your, with your lifestyle or whatever, but we're, it's okay. No, it's not. It's a lie. And you're, 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 you're helping to propagate that sin. If you love them, tell them the truth in love. Don't sit there and beat them over the head with the Bible because that doesn't work, but just tell them the truth. If I had cancer and you'd tell me the truth, I would hope and say, go get some help. You wouldn't say, no, it's okay. No, it's not. It's going to kill me. Same thing with unforgiven sin. It's going to be eternal death. 
separation from God for eternity. Very much alive, but in hell. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, watch the verse 14 says, Watch therefore that you do that you know neither day, watch therefore, for you know neither the day or the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. That's the rapture. Okay, the parable of the talents. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And one of them he gave five talents. That's a, that's a lot of money. It's like five years wages. And to the other he gave two talents. And then in the other one. Each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who received the five talents went and traded with, with it. And made another five talents. And likewise, one who had received two gained two also. They both doubled it. But the he who had received just one went and dug a hole in the ground and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of the servants came and settled and settled accounts with them. Okay, here's where the trouble starts. So he who had received five talents came and brought the five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered, you delivered me five talents, and look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. This is what the people, at, if you, if, when you go up to, as a, if you're a Christian, if you're born again, you're either, there's a thing called in the 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 13, talks about the wood, hay, and stubble, the gold, silver, and precious stone at the judgment seat of Christ. That's where the believers who come up, whatever is wood, hay, and stubble, that means your human good, which you, which you wasted, will be burned up. And it says you will, you will suffer loss, but you will not lose your salvation. Anything that is gold, silver, and precious stone, which is refined, will come through the fire, and you will reap gain. In other words, there's not, pro, there's not uh, equality in heaven. It's going to be absolutely... More than we could ever, our brains can't even think of, uh, fathom how good it's going to be. The lowest place in heaven is going to be infinitely above the highest place in hell, obviously. The, but the thing is, God gives us an opportunity as Christians. He said, you don't get saved and then just go ahead and sit on your couch and watch TV and eat bonbons. He said, no, get busy. This is, this book is go give this, go give this message to other people. Okay. That's what he's doing. This, this is us. This is referring to Christians. On these two, on these two men here, the third one is referring to somebody who's given the same opportunity. And let's see what he did with it. Well done, good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful over the, a few things, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And again, those who did what they were supposed to, when we go to heaven, it says what we're craving, wanting to hear is, "Well done, good and faithful servant." Not many people will hear that, in my opinion. He also, in the, verse 22, it says, he also had received, he who also had received two talents came and said, Lord, look at the, what you delivered to me, the, the two talents. You delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Enter into the joy of the Lord is heaven. And also prosperity. There's you're judged according to your works. Works doesn't save you. Can't get saved by works. But faith without works is dead. In other words, if you're saved, you're, it's going to it's going to show you who you you're going to see it. You're going to see the fruit of it. Okay. Now he came to the third one, the guys. <laughs> it says then he who had received just one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that you had you were a hard man reaping where you do not where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what was yours. In other words, you gave me something, I just I didn't do anything with it. I put it in the ground. Here you go, just the basics. But his Lord answered him and said, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I don't have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at least, you know, for interest. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. In other words, at least, even if it wasn't doubled, you were, you know, the amount, you at least put some effort. In. But you, he didn't even do that. He just ignored it. 
He heard, he heard something and just ignored it, stuck it off the side and says, there we go. We're good. And the, the servant or the master said, nope, nope. 28. So take that. So he, so that, so take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. Hmm. So the guy didn't even get to keep what he had. You know, he did, God said, you were disobedient. I gave you what I wanted you to have and you threw it away. Basically the, the, the opportunity. It says, for, for to everyone who has more will be given, and he, who, he, and he will have an abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. In other words, that's saying he's going to go out and steal from the poor. It says, you're going to have less than nothing. I gave you the opportunity to serve and to, and to make a difference, and you threw, you threw the opportunity away even after I told you that I was coming back. And you chose, you made an overt choice to say, no, I'm not going to do that. And he said, and, he, and cast the unprofitable servant out into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hmm. The, the thing is, the wicked servant, it, it goes on. This is just one of three places this is spoken of. The master is Jesus Christ. The talent is the word of God. The servants are, are people. He gives an equal opportunity to each person. You have some people, I'm just use a big name like Billy Graham or someone that's, you know, Jack Hibbs or, or R.C. Sproul, someone like that, who was given a lot, did a lot with what they were given. Then you've picked a guy who's, uh, let's say that the guy who sweeps the floor at the local high school who prays for the kids, who speaks to them, and he only gets to speak to in his, in his 40-year career. Let's say he only gets to speak to you know 50 or 60 people about Christ, but he does the best he can, and that's the ones that God put in, in his path, and he did the best he could just as hard as the guy who had uh, access to hundreds of thousands. They both had the same energy. They both had the same opportunity as far as what God gave them. Both, even though one of them only had a, only had five talents and the other one had double that, both it says received the exact same reward. Think about it. It just says it says the one who had ten, may, and the one who received five received the same reward, even though one was responsible for half what the other one was. God says, "I gave it to you according to your abilities." So he wouldn't give the you know he just. According to the way we're bent, the way he created us, he says, I will give you, you know, I'm not going to give you more. I'm not going to give you the Billy Graham uh, ticket to try to go do that if that's not, if you're not, that's not your thing. If that's not what he intended for you. It's going to be, at, if you're obedient, he'll give you the opportunity according to your own, to, according to your own abilities. Okay. Um, real quickly, I want to read uh, Matthew 24 again. We read that last week, obviously. You know, we had four weeks of that, but real quick, this will make sense coming into the next verses when we start from 31. I'm going to read uh, Matthew 24, 40 and 41. Um, uh, let me see where it's at. Let me find it. Um, there it is. And this is where it talks about, it says, then two men will be in the field. One will be taken. The other will be left. Two women will be in the grind at the grinding mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Remember how we talked about that? This is not the rapture. This is the judgment. So when you go back over to verse 31, this portion where it says the Son of Man judges the nations, this is post-tribulation, pre-millennial reign. You say, wait a minute, when the tribulations are written, that means that the next day is, no. Just like the rapture happens, the tribulation doesn't start the second after the rapture happens. Uh, because there has to be a signing of a peace agreement with Israel first, according to Daniel chapter nine twenty seven and a couple other places, where the because also the Antichrist can't be uh, revealed until we're gone until after the rapture, according to Second Thessalonians chapter two verse one through twelve, which most people who are ant are against uh, pre trib rapture uh, neglect to read. <clears throat> so you know you kind of have to throw that one out before if you're going to do that. So read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Read it. Um, that's, you know, there, there is a pre-trib rapture. It's not a mid or a post-trib because it, it just doesn't make sense. It's not grammatically correct. It's just not theologically correct. Um, 
So this verse 31 is, think about it. This is at, this is post-trib. You say, well, how do you know that? Because if you remember in Daniel chapter 12, where it says, you know, we're told there's three and a half years and three and a half years, two, three and a half year periods are 42 weeks or 42 months, 42 months or 1260 days, 1260 days, which is the Jewish calendar day or year of 360 days. It's seven years, and it says, but in Daniel 12, it says he adds 45 days to that. Why? Remember, we were speaking of this, and we were speaking on Daniel. Uh, actually, on uh, Thursday nights, we spoke on it. Because there is, it says, God, Christ, is the, it'll be the judge of the quick and the dead. It also says, uh, the, let me see, I see the, Okay, I'll answer that as our question come by, and it turned, it, I had my phone this way, so therefore it was text, and I was, I'm sorry. I know you asked me. I will answer that, uh, but I'm, I couldn't read it, and it cut me. It cut off, so please forgive me on that. Um, the what will happen is you'll have the, the rapture. You'll have the seven years, two, three and a half years, so seven-year tribulation. At the end of the seven-year tribulation, Christ comes down on the Mount of Olives in the evening during the warm season. Uh, let me see, seven years from seven years from the day that the that the that the uh, tr- that the uh, tribulation starts, that this pe- signing of the peace agreement by the by the uh, by the one by the, by the one world leader. And if we don't know when he signs that, well, then just look when the two witnesses show up at the. At the uh, at the temple in Jerusalem because they they go for twelve hundred sixty days so that's a, another factor. Um, at the end, those forty five days is going to be time to to judge those people that it says there one's left, one is taken. Those are people that are around everywhere else in the world that aren't in Israel when Christ comes back. The one who took the mark of the beast, obviously he he or she is gone. The one who is not uh, didn't take the mark and is a believer is left to go into the millennial kingdom to repopulate the earth for a thousand years. Okay, so keep that in mind when we start reading this. So let's go ahead and go here. So let me see, starting in verse 31, it says, When the Son of Man comes, that's Christ, in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, the throne of David in Jerusalem. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Okay, sheep is is is, is used for believers. Goats is used for unbelievers. What is is the picture of, of Satan, the animal, the goat? Okay, so what is the picture of Christ, the Savior? The Passover lamb, the lamb of God, the sacrificial lamb. We are referred to as sheep, and he, Christ, is referred to, even in the Old Testament, as the great shepherd. Now, they're shepherds of flocks, which he tells, you know, like Peter, to shepherd my flocks. That's the human pastor. Christ is called the great shepherd. That's only referred to deity, to Christ. So, another thing is, um, hopefully I wrote it down but I don't see it in my notes. Um, nah, don't worry about it. The, oh, uh, Ecclesiastes 10.2. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. I know we hadn't pulled that one out in a while. This is a wise man's heart is, is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is at his left. See, the thing is, it, the goats, when Christ is judging, you can look on, on this, you know, where he has on the throne, the, on his, those that are on his right-hand side <laughs> and those on his left-hand side, one is are, are lost, the other are saved. The ones that are on the right hand of Christ are saved. The ones on the left hand are lost. The ones on the left are called goats and tares, or weeds. The ones on the right hand are sheep and wheat. Well, it's kind of weird that our even our political system leans right and left. People who are anti-God, you know, that are that are into the world lean left. Those that are, you know, you don't have, not necessarily, that's not necessarily saying that you're a Christian. You may just be a good moral person, but if you're going according to morality that lines up with the Bible, you lean right. Hmm. 
So I wonder where they got the left. So people from the left, people from the right. Not saying the people from the right because there's some wing nuts out there that are even on the. I, I'm obviously a conservative. I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I am a conservative, but I leave lean conservative, which is according to scripture, leaning to the right. You know, pro life, pro marriage, pro family stuff like that, pro God. So keep reading. It said, and he will divide the sheep from his goats, from the goats. In other words, it's lost from the saved. Uh, you can look at uh, Revelation 2011 on the white throne judgment. That's the unbeliever's judgment. That's uh, chapter Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Uh, and for the believers, you can go to 1 Corinthians 3.13 and 2 Corinthians 5.10. Verse 33, it says, He, that's Christ, will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, that's Christ, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or, or feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When do we see you as a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king, that's capitalized king, that's king, and that's God, will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say unto you, insomuch as you did to one of the least of these, of these of the of my brethren you did it for me so when you're serving like when you're you're going out and doing stuff and you're not getting your cell phone going okay i want to see i want people to see me giving you this drink of water or giving money i want to make sure everybody knows that I, what a good person i am that's not what he's talking about he's talking about you're doing stuff to serve people for the fact of serving christ and he said when you did this to one of the least of these someone who couldn't give anything back in return he said it's the exact same thing as doing it for me personally not just do it and say, hey, okay, look, God, we know. No, if you're finding something, it doesn't mean be a foolish, being foolish with your money and giving it to every con artist. No, like the people who sit on the corner and says, we'll work for food. That's a con. That's, that's a, don't give money. But people who, the difference is you, you take a chance when somebody says, hey, I just need some help. Well, take the chance of getting screwed and give it to them anyway, but you do it for the right reason and you're praying about it when you do it to make sure to see for the leading of the Holy Spirit difference is you know like for instance i remember going to walmart one time and somebody said hey man I, can you give me some gas i just need five bucks for gas just enough to get home and i looked over i could see the gas station i said hey pull your car over there and i'll just we'll fill it up for you and they said oh no 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 that's okay i said the gas station right there i'll fill your car up so you don't have to worry about the gas for the rest of the week oh no and they left that's a con and then i've had some people that did the exact same thing that came up to me and said I need some gas. I, I'm stuck. Gas Can you make it to that gas station and I'll, I'll fill your car up? Yes. Thank you. Please. And I would fill a car up and they said, what a, why? Why'd you do this? Because I'm a practicing Christian, not just one who claims it. Not one who just says, oh, I'm a Christian because I go to church. You know, I was born, you know, I go, you know, born a Christian. No, I'm a practicing Christian. And I'm not saying this so as say, oh, that's so great. No, you're doing it because you're reading the scriptures and then following it. And that's what Jesus is saying here. He said, you not only read it, but you, did it. Okay. Now look at what he says to the other ones. Then he, Christ, will also say to those on his left hand, this is the lost, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire. That's the lake of fire. These are lost people. Prepared for the devil and his angels. For when I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I was naked, and you did not clothe me sick and in prison and you did not visit me then when they they will answer him christ saying lord when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you then he christ will answer them saying assuredly i say unto you insomuch as you did not do it for the least of these you did not do it for me and these will go into out away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into eternal life. Remember John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world, that's, that's the people, 
that he gave his only son that whoever should believe would be would not perish. That's eternal uh, lake of fire, but have eternal life, which is eternal salvation. You're saying, so if we do good works, we go to heaven? No, you're missing the point. He's very clear on this. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says works don't save you. He said, but it's the gift of God that through salvation through Jesus Christ. He's saying, if you're saved, if you're actually a follower of Christ, you'll have a desire to do. doesn't mean you have to go and go to every soup kitchen and every place, going out and hunting people down, trying to give them money and food and everything. He said, but be on the lookout. Every Ask God for the opportunity. And whenever it presents itself, You'll be wise as snakes, but shrewd as 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 doves, or as gentle as doves. It means you're looking for an opportunity to help. It may be nothing more than somebody says, "Hey, man, I'm I'm thirsty," and you're at, you're at the Walmart and you see some kid who's thirsty, and you go buy him a drink and give it to him, or someone who's in the line, you know, some mama who's trying to pay for food. You know, she might be a single mom, and she you can tell she's counting her pennies, and you you step up because you can do it. And then you say, because Christ, and they ask you why. I said, because I'm a Christian. Christ loves you. And then walk off. Unless, you know, unless they want to talk about Christ. And then walk off because God, it's not up to you whether their salvation isn't contingent to whether you talk to them or not. If God it prompts you to speak to them, give them the give them the gospel and then leave them alone. If they want more, they'll come back. Or they'll they'll find somebody, God will bring more people into their path. The the thing is, it may be as much as somebody realizing, oh, I'll just pick something big. Let's say you can tell there's a family that the husband's working, the wife's trying, and they they're just absolutely can't, they're just struggling. And you realize, you look at their car, and he's just barely making it to work because it's a, it's a piece of crap. And you can afford to buy maybe a used car or something that's in good shape or whatever, and give it to them. I mean, some people can do that. Most people can't. But and but you don't you don't do it to where they know you did it. You, and you you strictly give the glory to God, just like what Daniel did. He said when he went up to to the to King Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't say, "Well, I, let me tell you your dream because I I know the interpretation because I, I thought about it." No, he said, "God gave you the interpretation, not me. God, the glory goes to God." So anyway, pray for Israel. Um, they are the they are the indigenous people of Israel of the, the land. That includes a lot of I mean, there's like three hundred thousand square miles that they didn't get. <laughs> that God's going to give to them after He recreates new heavens and new earth. The city of Jerusalem, the holy city of Jerusalem, in Revelation comes down in Israel, not Rome, not the United States. And God says, "I'll bless those who bless you, and I'll curse those who curse you." Does that mean that all the Jewish people are, you know, out reading the Torah and wanting to go out and do good stuff? No, they're more secular, as secular as the United States. He's saying, as a whole, Israel, not just some nation over in the Middle East, which some people say, well, I don't have anything to do with it. No, God does. He says, that's my land. It's got my name on it. He takes it that serious. And it, if, if, the Jewish people are God's chosen people. If they weren't, why would God turn back to them after we're gone in the rapture, and at the end of the of the millennial or at the end of the seven year tribulation, Christ comes down and, and sits on the throne of David in Jerusalem, and at the end of the thousand year reign, when He recreates the new heavens and earth, He puts a brand new city of Jerusalem with the tree of life and flowing waters. You can just go read in Revelation. 21 and 22, he puts it in Israel. Kind of weird if, it, if those still aren't his chosen people. And he protects them, one, a remnant, one third of them, during the seven year tribulation from the three and a half years, for the second three and a half years, he he watches over them. Those that make it to those three, uh, Edom, Moab, or Ammon. Okay. If you want to see us tomorrow, there's Larry and Scott with, uh, it's called Le uh, Bible Talk with Larry and Scott. It's on Thursday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, just the same as this time. It'll be on this channel. Larry keeps promising me that he's going to get get my uh, get me back up. I'm having some issues, technical issues, where it's only showing up on Facebook and not showing up on my on my YouTube. But he says he'll, he'll get that fixed. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. If you have any questions, you can, you can contact myself or Larry on Facebook Messenger, YouTube Messenger, or you can actually 
I go to pray five, that's P-R-A-Y, the number five dot org. It's pray five dot org and go to contact us. If you're going through the website, it's free. We don't want anything from you. If anybody asks you for money or starts probing you, looking for information, that's not us. If we if we're asking for you to support a ministry, you'll see it face to face on here. We'll never send out messages ever. We'll never ask you for your information ever. And if you don't feel led to give money, then don't keep it in your pocket or give it to your local church or give it to wherever God leads you to do it. Okay. And give to your local church first, give to your local assembly first. Okay. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk to you later this next week. We'll be on chapter 26 and I can't believe we got uh, only three weeks left and we'll finish this one up. I will, um, Hadn't hadn't chosen to see what God uh, if He specifically put points me in a certain direction because uh, I'm I'm still looking for between two and three different books I don't know which one I'm gonna pick yet, um, but I'll let you know here quickly. Okay, if you have any if you have any questions or wanting to say hey I'd like to be if we could go through one of the books you can send that and I'll put those together and I'll see how much interest we have. Sometimes we have a lot, sometimes we have very little in certain books. You know. Not too many people want to see the, you know, uh, <laughs> there's certain books that most a lot of people don't want to see. But like, for instance, uh, we went through first, second, and third John. I had people enjoyed that. The book of Judas and the book. Uh, we're still talking about Revelation. I don't know if we're going to actually get into that because that took me 18 months the last time. <laughs> 18 months to get through that one last time. So we'll see. Okay, let's go ahead and pray out, shall we? Father, thank you for this time together. Your blessings, your mercy, and your grace. We ask that you would uh, spread your gospel throughout our families, heal our families first, then use us to spread the gospel outside of our home to our work, our work uh, people, our school, uh, to give us a prayer list to pray for them for salvation uh, and, to, and to step into their lives with the gospel. We ask that you would bless and protect Israel. We ask that you would send a revival, a great awakening to our country, starting in our churches, our schools, in our government. We ask that you would use us, Father, as a tool in your hand to spread the gospel. And may we be able to go give the gospel of the one true God, Jesus Christ, God the Son, who died on the cross for our sins, shed his blood for our sins. And anyone who would accept and believe and ask, ask him for salvation, he says, I will grant it to you. We ask these things in the name of the of Messiah, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're needing, wanting a place to know, read, start in the book of John. Uh, that's that's my favorite place to start is, is the book of John. It tells you who Christ is and how to get saved. We'll see you next week. Go and tell somebody about the gospel. <laughs>